Hi, my name is Sandra Beinhardt. I am MD at the Department of Internal Medicine 3 Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at the Medical University of Vienna, Austria. I will discuss our paper, Long-Term Outcomes of Patients with Wilson Disease in a Large Austrian Cohort, published in this issue of the journal. Main aim was to study the long-term outcome of a large, well-characterized cohort of 229 Caucasian Wilson disease patients diagnosed and treated in Austria up to 52 years, yet resulting in 3,116 patient years. These cases represent almost all expected cases to occur in Austria based on an incidence of 30 patients per mil. 72 of evaluated patients underwent liver biopsy. A genetic mutation analysis was performed in 95%. In 140 patients, presentation was preferentially hepatic, 61 presented with neurological symptoms and 23 were evaluated as asymptomatic siblings. In our Wilson disease cohort, mean age at first symptoms but also at first diagnosis was lower in hepatic presenting patients. Diagnosis could be established in 65% of cases within one year after symptomatic onset. Nevertheless, in 25% definite diagnosis was delayed for more than three years. Long-term outcome data evaluated within our study underscores favorable long-term prognosis with a 20-year cumulative survival rate of 92% compared to 97% in the general healthy Austrian population. Availability of liver transplantation certainly improved long-term outcome, but was still impaired. Generally, data comparing survival rates to healthy populations may be conflicting as survival estimates due to a low number of patients or to a short follow-up period are often barely comparable. Among performed studies with reasonable large sample sizes, death rates varied from 1.8% up to even 21.1%. Our study describes that by increased awareness of improved diagnostic possibilities within the last years, more patients were correctly diagnosed as in former decades patients may be misdiagnosed as cryptogenic. This issue became evident by segmenting time points of diagnosis by different decades and computing Kaplan-Meier plots. To the best of our knowledge, we firstly debated long-term outcome of autotopic liver transplantation in Wilson disease patients. The first transplantation was performed in 1986 since then, with more and better diagnostic possibilities, more patients with advanced hepatic disease were seen and their number further increased after the year 2000. Within our evaluations, a total of 30 patients were transplanted. Out of those, four died. One patient was transplanted due to deterioration of neurological symptoms, but symptoms did not improve. 87% of transplanted patients were living at the end of follow-up with a maximum of survival of 27 years after OL takes, comparing well with findings of 1 in 5 year patient survival data listed in the United Network for Organ Sharing. So our data underline the improvement of survival rates achieved by transplantation. Independently, mortality rate of 7.5% was lower as described in former studies. 70 patients died within the observational period and only in 12 patients cause of death was definitely related to Wilson disease. There was no difference in mortality rates according to phenotypic presentation and in contrast to other studies, no malignancies were seen. Nevertheless, the strongest predictor of impaired survival in our study findings was histologically proven cirrhosis at diagnosis, ruled out by multivariate analysis, and possible due to the fact 
that most of our patients underwent liver biopsy whether they presented predominantly hepatic or neurological symptoms. To conclude, long-term prognosis in Wilson disease patients surviving more than 10 years after diagnosis, enabling early treatment initiation is excellent in terms of survival as well as in clinical conditions. These findings are especially convincing in patients diagnosed at an early stage and hence before development to cirrhosis. Moreover, sustained information about adherence to treatment should be enhanced in patients diagnosed at a younger age or in siblings without symptoms at the time point of diagnosis to hinder development to cirrhosis.